guys, welcome to my small and humble kitchen here. Um, I got some very exciting news. Uh, I started a YouTube channel. <laughs> Go figure. Um, it's called Garden State Growing, and it's going to be following me on my journey with my garden um, from my in house grow tent to my outside greenhouse, which if you see my first video, you'll know that uh, it's a disaster. But anyway, it's bitter cold outside, so I said, what can I do inside? So I decided to uh, start my mushrooms again and, and get them ready for, you know, the end of winter and early spring and get my cultures going and stuff. So uh, why don't you join me in my kitchen while I show you how I prepare and go through my cultures and setting up my green spawn and uh, trying another shiitake mushroom experiment. Because last year I did not do that good. I did get some shiitakes. I got some rishis. I got some lion's mane. But I, I mean, I really was not happy with the harvest. It uh, Everything that I was learning it was my first year. Um, like really attempting to seriously grow mushrooms and uh, besides just like buying fruiting blocks from, you know, uh, Fungi Perfecti, you know, all the, all these different companies that I love, you know, I really want to do it from the beginning and there was a lot of failures. There was a lot of mistakes made. Um, so this is a new year and let's see what I can do. Um, I'm going to bring you along here and uh, I'm going to turn this camera around and of course I can't do it while I'm vid videoing. So... Uh, I'm going to have to stop real quick, turn the camera around, and then I'm going to bring you along and show you what I had to do. All right? All right, guys. So here we are. And these here are my culture dishes that I made last year. They look a little dry, a little worse. I throw bad technique. I want to see how far sterility really matters. And trust me, it really does matter. But... You know, I got some more blue oysters over here. They don't look that bad. And a lot of times you just rehydrate these and they're good to go. This one, this lion's meat does not look great. It's, you know, it's the mushroom mycelium on an agar, agar plate. Uh, here's some more blue. The blue oysters are still looking really good. And I thought I had shiitake in here, but... It's really not that big of a deal because I'll just make some more petri dishes up. I'll go to the local farmer's market. I'll pick up some shiitake mushrooms. Uh, I'll, I'll make some more petri dishes and I'll, I'll bring you along for that process. So look for that video later on, um, you know, coming up soon. So hopefully, um, but let me move on to show you what I'm doing for my, what's called grain spawn. And uh, right here I have, rye grains that I buy in bulk from Amazon. Uh, I'll try to find a link and put it in the description below. Um, but I put it a long time ago. It, it really lasts you a long time. So I took this uh, rye grain and I just threw it in a five gallon bucket and I filled it up with water and I mixed it around and I rinsed it out and I did it like three, four or five times till the water ran clean. And then I just kept it topped off with water. I set it aside and I let it soak for anywhere between I don't know, 10, you know, 10, 12, 24 hours, whatever. The longer the better, I guess. You know, and then I put it into a pot and uh, brought it up to a boil and I let it simmer for, you know, once it's up to a boil, let it simmer for 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. You can keep on checking. You want the grains to be nice and, and soft to the touch, like kind of, but not mushy and not broken. I don't know if you can see that. Let me pick some up for you. You know, you can see they're nice and plump. I can feel it. there's a, a decent amount of moisture, okay, in this. And that's exactly what we want, because mushrooms are mostly moisture anyway. All right? And so, as you can see behind me, I have these bell jars. It's hard to, like, reach out and grab stuff. My perspective is off I'm trying to film from my phone. But I have these jars that I filled up almost to the top. I left some room because after I inoculate them... I want to be able to shake them around and, and get that mycelium, you know, all mixed up in there. And I took these lids and I just put some polypropylene uh, stuffing, some pillow stuffing right here. And wadded it up. I'll, I'll take you through the process. I got a couple more to do. And then I'll show you how I put them in my pressure canner. 
and I sterilized them once it reaches 15 PSI. I let that go for 90 minutes. I'll talk more about that later. So let me get the rest of these cans. I'm going to try to bring you along and I'll show you how I do my jars. Sorry, cans. My belt, you know, my ball jars and, uh, and set that up. And I also, I want to show you, you don't have to have ball jars. I have just a, a Maxwell House container here. This is going to be an experiment because I did too much grain. I overestimated and I'm going to put some in here. I have an old, uh, mayonnaise jar that i picked up i i drilled the hole in that i drilled two holes in the top of that and and the stuffing on top is just acts like a filter so it doesn't allow any bad bacteria or bad molds to enter while we're through the process because like i said sterility is key you want to grow mushrooms you don't want to grow you know weird shit i i have pictures and i'll put them you know with this video of what it's like when mushroom growing goes wrong <laughs> and you get everything and i'll show you they were there were a couple ball jars and they were actually a whole grow bag that i had put in the dark um because i didn't want them to go bad and i put them there and then i completely forgot about them and they and all they right almost guys, as like promised this is what so happens they just when growing mushrooms goes shit. wrong and, and i'll show you that and i got a lot of pictures of what it. i did as you can see, the jars are like gross. They're black. Oh, I don't even know what that is. These next pictures. Oh, no, a fruiting block gone terribly wrong. Yeah, there you go. That's what happens when mushroom growing goes wrong. With this grain, because after you boil it for 15 minutes, I uh, drain it with a colander, just like that, and then I put it on this towel here to absorb more moisture. I picked it up, I brought it outside where it's brutal. All right, here today. we are. This is uh, and I just right kept out taking of the a spoon and mixing it around the until the they were nice and <laughs> nice dry. Big pile of rye grain steaming off. Look how big that tower is. Yep. Okay, so I brought it outside. I started uh, smoothing it out. I was using my hand, but man, that stuff was hot. I was doing stupid. Yeah, get smart. Use a spoon. So I just mixed it up a bunch of times. Still retained a lot of moisture. And they were at like room temperature here and they flow nicely. They're not stuck together or anything like that, which is exactly what you're looking for. So let me do these jars. I'll bring you along with me doing one and then I'll finish up and do the rest. Um, oh, before I do that, I want to show you how I prepare my jars. Well, basically, I put them in the sink. I scrub them down really good with soap and water. And then I have a very mild bleach and pine sole solution that I use. And I just spray it all on and try to sterilize it as best as I can. Even though at this point, sterility is not that important because we are going to pressure can it. It's going to be after we do this step that you cannot introduce any other germs. All right, so let me bring you along with that. Okay, here we are. I have my ball jar. I hope you guys can see this because I have to like kind of prop my phone off and I really can't see what is going on right now. I guess I should flip the phone around and do this. Yeah, let me do that. It might be better. Okay, here we are. I have my jar. I filled it up, eh, you know, up to like this bottom rim here with grain. And I'm going to take my lid that I had drilled a quarter inch hole through. And very simply, I'm just going to pull a, a nice pinch of some of this uh, poly bill pillow, whatever. I got it at Walmart. It was like a buck or something stupid like that. Real easy. I'm going to put this through. Ugh. I don't know why I grunt when I do that. I grunt when I do easy shit. Um, but anyway, so I have it here. But the thing is, is you see how long that cotton is? If that touches the grain and it gets inoculated, the, the actual mushroom is going to try to grow out of the top. I think I have a picture of my lion's mane doing that. Oh, matter of fact, let, let me go get it real quick. I, I, I know I have it.
Yes. Here's my lion's mate. This was done on 729 of 2019. Uh, oh no, Turkey Tail. I apologize. Not lion's mate. It looks like lion's mate. But see, I just let it go way too long. I didn't have any blocks to inoculate. I let it dry out. It's got some weird liquid at the bottom. I don't know what that is. Uh, but as you can see, that cotton there, that's like a hard mushroom. Okay, that's what happens when your cotton touches the grain. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's not do that. So let's take this and give it a little haircut. Let's see if I can get it done. All right, that, see that, that's good. It's much shorter, okay? I got that nice little space on the jar. You know, I only fill it up to that little rim there. So then when I put this on there like that, and I tighten this down, and there you go, I have another jar. So I let me do the rest of all this, and then once I do that, I'll bring you back in, and I'll show you how I put it into my pressure canner, and how I sterilize these jars, and get them prepared for my petri dishes and my grain spawn. So, okay guys, welcome back to my kitchen. I finished doing all my jars. I have them ready to go, ready to be put into that pressure canner. If I can focus on it, because I'm an idiot. There it is, yes, okay. And there are my jars. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11 jars in total. I didn't do the Maxwell House. I didn't have enough grain to do that. Maybe I'll turn that into a fruiting block uh, later on. I, yeah, that, that sounds great. Um, so, and I didn't get to fill this uh, mayo jar up to its capacity, but like, who cares? As long as it's loose and I can move it around, that's fine. Um, I'll show you why in, uh, in, in a future video. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take all these jars and I'm going to place them into my pressure canner that I have here. I forgot how big this is. I think it's a 32 quart pressure canner. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. So I'm going to do that. And I have this little thing that goes on the bottom that separates the bottles from the bottom of the, the pot. Because you don't, it could crack the glass if it gets too hot. So that just puts a little insulation layer there. Um, but before we put these in there, there is one more step. We have to take tin foil and we're going to put it on top and close it down. And that's just gonna prevent any extra moisture from getting back into here. Cause right now these grains have as much moisture as I want in these jars to successfully make grain spawn. I really don't want any more. Um, so let me get the tin foil and we'll do that. So all I have here are these uh, foil sheets. Uh, you can get them like Costco or BJ's or ShopRite or whatever. I mean, they're just, you know, pre-sliced uh, sheets of it that make it really easy. And I just take it and I wrap it around bottle and i'll smooth that out a lot better once i get two hands and i don't have to hold the camera so i'm going to do that to all of these including that mayo jar right there and then i'm going to start loading them in and as you can see before there's already water that i put in here i pre-put a bunch of water in here that i took piping hot from my stove i mean from my sink uh because i got 60 gallons of this piping hot water downstairs and this is really going to help bring this entire 32 quarts up to a boil and get it steaming and get it pressurized a lot quicker than if I just put in regular, you know, room temperature or cold tap water. So let me finish up these uh, jars right now and I'll show you how I load them up. Okay, guys, here we are. I've got all of my jars covered with the tinfoil. As you can tell, I cut my tinfoil. Those sheets were just way too big. I just didn't need all that tinfoil. So I cut them into four. It's good. I'm, I'm saving some money here. So that, that's awesome. So now all I have to do is try to fit all these jars in here. I don't think I'm going to have that much of a problem. So I'm just going to line them up as best as I can around the perimeter. I don't know if I should put that mayo jar because it is plastic right on the bottom because uh, this is an experiment with that i don't even know if it's going to survive being uh 
sterilized <laughs> like this. It might just come out like a big melted goo of bottle. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay, it looks like I'm not going to have enough room to fit one in there. That kind of stinks. I don't like leaving open room like that. But here we go. And I'm not happy because, as you can tell, that's floating and the water is too high. I do not want this to come up over the, the lids. Um, there is a method of doing this where it's just uh, an immersion sterilization. I don't necessarily trust it as much. It's basically where you take these, uh, you take these bell jars and you put it in there. And you cover them completely. That's if you don't have a, a pressure sterilizer. If you're just using a regular pot. And you bury the um, jars and you submerge them in the water till the water's like, you know, an, an inch off of the top. And then you do that for like 20 minutes or something like that. I do not trust that. As, I don't trust that with canning uh, as far as pickles and vegetables and food that I'm going to eat. And I don't trust that with my grain spawn. So... Uh, it looks like these are easily going to fit. I'm going to have plenty of room. And you know what? I think I'm going to just put these down on the side because I don't want them to fall over. Sometimes this, uh, these sterilizers, when they build up all that pressure, they, they can get a little violent in there. Um, you'll see when I put my grow bags in there, I, I will weight them down with a plate um, to do that. So now all we really have to do, I'm going to, I should have done this in the beginning, was just turn this thing on high and get that going. All right, it looks like I got that on full blast. This stove is uh, is junk. We bought it when we had zero money, and we literally bought the uh, cheapest stove we could that actually fit because it's 36 inches wide, and it needs to have that little cabinet on the side here, or else I have to get new cabinets, and I'm not ready for that. <laughs> no way. So I'm going to put this down for a second. I'm just going to get this lid on. As you can see, maybe I can do it. We got, it has like these big locking rings on it. And, uh, nope, I'm going to have to put you down for a second, but I'll be right back. Okay, I had some mental problems, like my brain fell out. I couldn't get that lid on to save my life. But as you can see, those things have to kind of line up. I don't even want to take it off anymore. Yeah, because it only goes on one way. And that's it. And it locks in here. And then you have to turn it. Boop. And lock it. And that was the little relief valve that goes back in there. Boop, boop. Okay, guys, we're back. Okay, but as you can see, I took the lid back off because when I was putting this lid back on, as hard of a time as I did, I noticed that this little thing right here, okay, had popped and completely come off. Now, the problem with that is, hold on. When this piece comes off, it allows this piece to fall out. Now you have an open gusset into it, and uh, you're not going to get any steam. So <laughs> this needs to get put back on there. I'm going to screw that back on. And this just allows me to push that little button down and release pressure from inside the pressure cooker if I want, okay? the more It's not really a dangerous situation, but I'm not going to get any pressure, and I'm, I'm not going to sterilize anything. Most important things are this little pressure gauge here. If, you, if it will focus, there you go. You can see 5, 10, 15. You want this to come up to 15 PSI before you start your 90-minute clock. Okay, if it's not up to 15 PSI, don't start your clock yet. Okay, so I'm going to put this back together, and then I'm going to lock this lid down. I'll show you that again, and then we'll put the rocker on, and then I'll show you that, and I'll, I'll bring you back once it starts to rock. Okay, so here we are. We're back showing you again. You know, you put the lid on, focus. There you go. You see how it locked, and now I take it, and all I have to do is lock that in right there 
and let this come up to uh, pressure. I'm going to take the little rocker that I have here. It's just a little weighted thing. It goes on top of this little spout right here. And once start, steam starts coming out, it'll start to, you know, rock a little bit. But once it reaches 15 PSI, this thing's going to go, and it's going to make a big noise, and it's going to be a big pain in the ass. And you'll hear. That's why I try to do it when my wife is not home, so she doesn't get angry at me. All right, guys, while that is pressurizing away and getting ready to start rocking and uh, sterilizing, I want to bring you back to these Petri dishes. You know, I was really looking at them, and even though they look clean, there's no green spots, there's no black spots, there's nothing that would tell me that these have, you know, gone bad. Maybe this lion's mane doesn't look that good. It's still, I think it just didn't proliferate a lot. I think there's just a lot of the agar showing through. But um, I don't really see any black. The blue oysters almost look completely fine. Here's the other lion's mane that looks a lot better than the other one. But I, I was thinking, I don't know. I mean, they are pretty old. They are pretty dry. Why would I risk, you know, inoculating my grain, going through all this work, setting up fruiting bags, you know, doing everything that I want to do with these mushrooms with a culture that I'm just not sure is going to work out. So if I'm going to go to the store tomorrow and pick up um, sushitake mushrooms, I might as well go to the Chinese food market and I can get uh, king oysters, black oysters, um, uh, mazatakis, uh, shiitakes, uh, enokis. I can get a uh, wood ear. I can get so many types of, uh, of different mushrooms and I'll just set up a petri dish. And, and that's a great thing because I'll get to bring you along on that journey of setting up these petri dishes. And you'll see how I inoculate my petri dishes and how I actually make them from the agar agar. Um, yeah, I mean, there's some other ingredients that I'll show you when I actually make it and I'll actually give you a recipe. Um, so back to these petri dishes. I do not trust them. I'm going to go to the supermarket tomorrow. I'm going to pick up new mushrooms. I'll bring you along with me to the market so you can see their selection. It's amazing. Okay. And then I'll show you how I make my petri dishes and uh, get some cultures growing. So when we do this grain spawn that we have here, uh, it'll be beautiful. <laughs> so I'm going to let you go for right now. We'll be back in probably about an hour before this thing starts rocking. And um, I'll show you what that sounds like so you know, so we know when to set the timer. All right, see you in a little bit. Hey, guys, I just wanted to add this. Um, when I was talking about my rye grains and putting them in a five-gallon bucket and letting them soak for, you know, 12 to 24 hours, um, this step is crucial. Uh, what it does is it allows the rye grain to absorb more moisture. Um, but what it also does is it cleans out all that chaff, all the, the husks from, from the rye grain that you don't want your, your, your mushrooms don't want it. You don't want it. So rinsing that out. But what it also does is it allows any molds and spores that are in that rye grain to start to grow and start to grow. Well, the reason is, is because they're easier to kill when I pressure sterilize them. Um, when they're in their spore form, they're like protected. And some microorganisms can withstand, you know, the intense heat and pressure of a pressure cooker. Uh, if once you let them grow for a little bit and uh, let them take root, then they're easier to get rid of. It's, it's really that simple. So that's why you don't want to skip this step. Also, uh, what I wanted to add is I add a cup of coffee to um, like one cup for every two and a half gallons. So if I do a, a full bucket of water, uh, regardless of how much grain I put in there, uh, I'm going to put in two cups of coffee. Um, why? I'm not exactly really sure. It was a tip I picked up when I was learning how to do all of this, and it always seemed to kind of work. Um, but what I do know from gardening and growing vegetables is coffee will make your soil and your water solution a little bit more acidic. It'll drop it from like a balanced neutral 7 pH to maybe like a 6.5. I doubt it's going to go any lower than that. Um, but just even lowering down a couple points may make all the difference in the world when you're doing your final grain spawn product. 
So I've been doing it. It always seemed to work. And I know a lot of other people that they pick up gypsum and they put that like a tablespoon or something like that in with the rye grains and they mix it all around. And that helps the grains um, not stick together as much as clump up too much. But um, I never really had that problem. If you do the moisture level right and you boil them for 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe, and you take them out before they start to burst, you don't want the grains to burst. Okay, once you start seeing a couple greens burst, that's when you want to stop the boiling. You want to get them out. You want to get them drained. You want to get them dry. Because um, the mushrooms don't like the greens bursted apart. They like the whole greens a lot better. So, you know, you take them outside. You let them dry out. All right? And as you can see, like I shook the grain jars. They, they, they were nice and loose. There was plenty. I could feel plenty of moisture. So I, I don't. I don't add gypsum to when I do the soak. I just add the coffee. Maybe it lowers the acidity level. Maybe not. Maybe somebody knows better than me, and they could answer it in the comments and let me know why we add coffee to, uh, you know, your grain when you're when you're uh, soaking it. So. Uh, that's it for now. I'm still letting the pressure canner come up to boil. It's starting to, as you can see, steam quite a bit. That button that I was talking about starting to let out a lot of steam. Once it comes to pressure, that button will pop right out and it'll be sticking up and uh, it'll stop the steam from coming out. It'll lock it and this thing will start to come up. Can I get the... Yep, that will start to climb to 15 PSI. So I'll bring you back when we're at that level. It's so funny, just as I cut that video, just as I cut that clip and I pressed the stop button on my phone, that they went, rattle, 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 and it stuck up. So you see, you press it down, steam comes up, whoa, that's hot, whoa, whoa, hot, oh, stop doing that, Eric, okay. All right, so that's up, so now that's going to start gaining some pressure. Okay, guys, as you can see, we have reached 15 PSI. My weighted rocker is rocking. My pressure relief valve is up. It stopped letting out steam. I have set my microwave for 90 minutes. It's been a couple minutes since I've done that. Hi, microwave. Hi, lunch bag. Hi, microwave. Okay, never mind. Anyway, so we are back. This thing is rocking and rolling. I'll show you what I do when the 90 minutes is finally up, but I'll let you know it's pretty simple. I just turn off the heat. And I let it go, and I let it sit till tomorrow morning when it's nice and cool, and I can remove those jars without a problem. Um, I'm not going to just open it up and put them on the counter. Uh, if they'll cool too quick, it could cause steel problems. Um, I, I leave it in there because it's a dry mix. If it was a wet mix like a jam or a jelly or a tomato sauce, I could remove them hot. And I would put them on the counter, I would lay out a towel, and I would actually take the jars and I would put them upside down so the liquid would seal the bottom. And as it cooled, it would create a vacuum and suck in that cap to let you know that you got a great seal. So I'll bring you back after the 90 minutes. I'll show you that I'm turning it off and I'll let you know what my plans are for then. But as of right now, that's how I'm preparing my grain spawn. Tomorrow, I am going to go to H Mart, and I'm going to pick up the mushrooms. I will bring you along for that. It will be a short video, but I think you'll really like it. Um, and then I'll show you how I do my pizza dishes and everything in later videos. So um, I'll come back in a little bit. I'll show you me turning it off, and then we'll uh, say goodnight for tonight. All right? Bye. Okay, I just wanted to bring you back. You know, I got up to check... Uh, it's been about 20 minutes since it's been rocking, and it's starting to creep a little bit past 15 there, as you can see. Now, you don't have to keep this on full blast once it's rocking and rolling like this. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to turn it down to about medium, medium low, and we should start seeing that needle start drop a little bit. And there it goes. It's dropping just a little bit. I really want to keep it in that 15 margin. If you have a very good stove, if you have a very hot stove, that needle could go way past 15, go to the 20, and then go into the caution. And if you're not paying attention, you just set up a bomb in your kitchen. 
So it's always good to come back every, you know, 15, 20 minutes, take a look. And I see it's starting to drop a little bit lower than 15. The rock is really starting to slow down a little bit. I'm going to kick it up the heat just a little bit here. And I'm going to give it 10 minutes. I'm going to come back. I'm going to check it. I'm going to make sure that needle didn't go too low or too high. I, I think I'm out of the too high range right now. So, yeah, it's really starting to slow down that rocker. I uh, just don't want that to drop below 15. So I'm going to raise the heat just a little bit more. I'm going to come back in 10 minutes and I'm going to take a look at it. Okay, guys, it's been 90 minutes. The timer went off. It's now 11 o'clock. I uh, turned off the heat. I'm just going to let that sit. Um, some people will take like a wooden spoon and they will press down and try to release that pressure. Uh, but you know what? I'm letting it cool down overnight. I'm not going to matter. I don't want it to open it up right away. If it, like I said, if this was tomato sauces or jams or, you know, jellies or anything that had a liquid in it, I could press that down, release all the pressure till it was down to zero. I could safely open it up, pull out the hot jars and put them on the counter upside down. Um, and that's it right now for grain spawn. Um, in another video, I will show you after I make my Petri dishes, I will show you how I inoculate this grain uh, to let the mycorrhizal fungi uh, proliferate, and uh, we'll get to that. All right, so for now, that's it, and uh, good night. Uh, please, if you like this video, smash that like button. If you can, share this. Like I said, these are going to be one of my first videos on this channel. Uh, I really don't expect it to find any traction whatsoever, but you never know. Um, I'm in the middle of setting up other social media accounts for uh, Garden State Growing, and uh, all your support would be uh, greatly appreciated. Thank you, and have a good night.